Hi there, I'm Sean C. Davis, and this is a tutorial on building out JSON pages using external data within a Gatsby project. This builds off a previous tutorial uh, that went into more in-depth background and all of that and, and used, it's, instead of in, external data, it used internal data with markdown files. This is gonna build on top of that. So if you want some of that background, you can go and watch that other video. It is linked from this video. Um, what we'll do here is we're just going to kind of run through really quickly and show that you could do the same thing uh, with external data as you could with markdown files. And the transition between the two is relatively trivial, especially if you're using some pre-baked um, Gatsby plugin. In this particular case, I'm going to use Sanity as an example. I won't show you any of the Sanity UI really other than just that the the content is there and, and that we're bringing it in, but you could swap Sanity out for anything contentful uh, data, any, really anything with an API will work totally fine here. Okay, so what we're gonna do to get started, at least in this particular example, is I'm going to install the Gatsby Source Sanity plugin. I'm using Yarn, so I'm gonna do this through Yarn Add, Gatsby Source Sanity. You might be using NPM, you could do NPMI here as well. That would work totally fine. And then I'm gonna come up here and copy this config and put it in my Gatsby config file. I'll replace a couple of the values with what I have locally. I do have this uh, ENVRC file, which will load environment variables locally for me. And so I'm using Sanity token and Sanity project ID to kind of keep that code out of my repo here. So we'll say, uh, sanity project ID. My data set is called production. And that should be all I need to get started for sanity. And so with that, I should be able to start my development server. I'm going to clean the cache just to make sure nothing's left over from the previous example. And as that gets booted up, we we're going to use this uh, like we did in the previous tutorial, just to make sure that we can actually query this data. And then once we can query the data, we can then go use it to build out our pages. Uh, so locally, I can go to my graphical server here, and I'm gonna run all sanity post. I suppose before I do that, we can take a look real quick at what sanity looks like for me. It's in this page that I, I have uh, a post content type, and I have two posts here, one called my post, which has a title, a slug, a date, and a body, and then another post here as well. Okay, and that's why we have this all sanity post object here. And as we can usually do with collections, I can say just node ID and I should get what I want, which is great, but I want to actually grab the content with me. So I'm gonna say title and date slug and slug with sanity happens to be uh, pass an object through. So I will use current inside of slug, and then body as well. And there we go. I've got the data that I want to work with. This is great. This looks somewhat similar to how we would approach it with Markdown. With the, the Markdown Remark plugin, it, we, we remember that we would, uh, any of the data that came from front matter would get shoved in a front matter object, and that the body would come through as an HTML uh, key value pair. So the, the structure of the data is a little bit different, and so we'll have to transform it a little bit, but otherwise this approach should work, uh, it, it should work relatively similar to our approach with markdown files. Which means I'm gonna come back here to my Gatsby node project. This code I had was left over from that markdown example. So what I'll do is I will replace my GraphQL query first, and then, uh, some of this can stay relatively similar. I'm gonna keep my post path. I'm gonna keep my posts. And I'm also going to say, uh, I'm gonna create the directory for um, for these JSON files if, if it doesn't exist already. And then I'm gonna loop through the post as I did before, but now the way that I actually uh, transform the data within here will look a little bit different. In fact, uh, it's going to be a lot cleaner because I don't have to build the slug from any path or anything like that. So I can say my data is really just my post at this point, which is going to be 
title, date, slug, body. Uh, and we'll get all of these except the the problem in that in this particular approach here is that if I just did this, if I just spread the post object, I would get title, date, slug, body. I would get almost everything I need except slug would come through and it would look like this. Say for my post, it would look something like that. We don't want that. We want the slug to actually come through as a string. And so what I can do is override that by simply saying slug is post.slug.current in this particular case. And then we're going to write the file just as we had before. The post path will use the slug of the post, uh, which in this particular case is going to be just data.slug because now we have this data object. And then we'll stringify that data and write it to file. Alrighty, now I'm going to kill my server and let's clean again, clear the cache, oops, clean and build. And we should get what we want from here. Let's watch the public directory as everything gets built out. And what we will expect to see is a JSON file for each of the posts. Oh, and we were saying can't read it. Oh, okay. So I, yes, I made one mistake here, which is that uh, in posts, I, I'm looking for result.data.posts, but what I'm really getting back here, it would be result.data.allsanity post. And that's because if you remember from that previous video, you can alias these, um, these queries, which I didn't do. So I'm gonna say posts colon and then let's try this again, and maybe we'll get what we actually want this time. Okay, let's take a look in our public directory and under posts, and we've got JSON for my post and another post, look at that. And if I say, I'm gonna serve this, should run me a, a, stat, a web server, a static web server from this public directory, which is available at localhost 9000. And so now if I could do posts, uh, not my first post, but say my post, whoops, there we go. Or if I go back to another post, we have what we want there. So that's it. And so you could take this example and you could swap literally any other external API or any other external data source for what we have here. And you just take the same approach. And that approach is that you query the data you want, you transform it into the objects that you want to appear, and then you and, and then create the directory that where you want to put that, which should be in the public directory, and then write it. So again, the big caveat with this particular approach is that none of this works within the context of the development server. This is really about writing files on the build during the build process. So you know, that comes through because we uh, we use this on post build object. So none of this runs unless we're actually building Gatsby and then it runs after that Gatsby build has completed. But <laughs> In the end, we end up with JSON files that have been pulled in from external dynamic data, and that can be fairly powerful depending on your particular use case. Well, that was a quick tutorial, quick run through. Uh, I know it, it, we moved fast. Uh, the, a lot of that was because the background information was largely in that that other Markdown tutorial. So if you want more information, I encourage you, go back and watch that. Markdown based tutorial, or just have a read through the um, through the article itself, and uh, both of those are linked below. Otherwise, I hope this works for you. I'm Sean C. Davis, and I'll see you next time.